Hi everyone, this is Pierre from P2 Design. In this Blender 3.0 tutorial, I will explain you what a king set is, how it works, and how you should use it. Let's get started. First of all, we need to know what is a key or a keyframe. It's a registered value at a given time. Blender handle time using frames. Keying two different values between those two frames will make the cube move between these frames. Any value input can be keyed in Blender. You can key the RGB values of a color. You can also key any value input of a shader node. This is how I make most of my VFX. On there, the only limit is your imagination. You can key modifiers, geometry nodes, whatever you want. There are different ways you can insert a keyframe. You can hover over a group of value or a single value and press I, or you can simply right click on the value and choose the operation you want. Or in the properties panel, you can click on the dot icon next to the input value. The dot icon will turn into a diamond shape. It's pretty common to key the transform channel of an object to animate it. With an object or a bone selected, you can press I in the 3D view to open the Insert Keyframe menu. This will allow you to key the location, rotation, scale, or any combination of those inputs. Note that the new input has been added to Blender 3, allowing you to also key the custom properties of any object. Objects also have Delta Transform inputs, this is exclusive to object. Bones don't have a delta transform input. Delta transform is a transform value added on top of your current animation or your current transform values. This is great to offset two animations that use the same action, for example. Here the ball has the same action as the cube with the X location delta added on top of it. Visual transform is a little bit trickier. Here, the cube is a child of the sphere, so whenever I'm moving the sphere, the cube will follow. I will move the sphere by 3 meters on the z-axis. Since the cube is a child of the sphere, it has also moved up, but its location coordinates haven't changed. If I now press I to insert a new keyframe and choose visual location, we can see the cube's location inputs turn to yellow meaning that the current values are keyed in the current frame. But the Z location value has turned to a range. It means that the Z location has been keyed at some point, but the current value, 0, is not correct or hasn't been registered on this specific frame. To see what the current Z location value is, I will open the graph editor. If I zoom in and select my Z location curve, we can see that its value is currently 3, not 0. And this is why our Z location transform channel was orange. The displayed value is not the registered value. And as soon as I will scrub in the timeline, Blender will read the graph editor and will offset the cube by 3 meters. It has registered the visual transform of the cube that was plus 3 meter on the Z axis, and it's now added on top of the motion of the sphere, which is the parent of the cube. You say it's something I'm using whenever I'm animating, but this is something we always use whenever we are baking an action, so that we get rid of any relationship between two objects, two bones, or whatever constraint we are using, and we do write the current motion of the object in space, visually. This is something we use a lot for motion capture cleaning, or whenever we are using space switching. Check out my free video that is already available on my YouTube channel. And don't worry if you don't get everything about Visual King, because you will barely use it whenever you are animating. When animating in Blender, it can be super tedious to always have to press I to insert a new keyframe whenever you are trying to animate the cube, for example. And we will often forget and lose the current transform we've applied. So the next step is to enable the auto keying. As soon as I move the object in space, I will be warned that Blender is currently auto-keying or auto-inserting keyframes. And by default, Blender will insert a keyframe on all the transform channels of the object, and I can see them in my timeline. Now, what if I don't want to key all those transform channels? Or if I want my object custom properties to be also keyed, which is not the case here. All transform channels on the default cube are currently keyed. 
I will go in the timeline, expose the different transform channel and get rid of the rotation and scale. And now let's say I just want to key the location of the cube. This to keep my timeline and graph editor clean. If I don't use the rotation, I may not want to key the rotation. To do so, I will go to the King tab and here I can find all the different combinations we have seen before. I will choose location and now if I move my cube, Blender warns me that auto keying is on and I'm expecting it to only key the location, but it does still key all the transform channels. And my timeline is now a mess. To make sure that Blender used the current keying set, you need to specify it on the drop down menu near the auto keying button and enable only active keying set. If I now move the cube, Blender will only key the location channels, keeping my timeline, graph editor, and dope sheet clean. By default, the insert mode is set to add and replace. If I choose replace only instead, Blender will key the transform channel only if it has been keyed before. If I try to move the cube on a frame where it doesn't have any key, Blender won't create a new key. I never use this insert mode. Finally, if you use a keying set and press I in the 3D viewport, Blender will insert a keyframe using the current keying set. You will no longer have the possibility to choose the combination of transform channels you want to key. When working with a character rig, which is a little more complex than a simple cube, using a proper keying set is mandatory to keep your animation clear and organized. In this example, auto keying is on. As I move the controller, I'm warned, and as soon as I release, it, Blender will write a keyframe for all the transform channel of the selected controller. Now, if I select this ball target controller, only its location transform channel is keyed because its rotational scale won't influence the character. But if I move it, Blender will key all the transform channel, even those that are locked. And I don't want that because I'm supposed to only be moving this controller using its location. And now in my graph editor, I have the rotation and the scale, so I have additional curve that I won't be using. And if you have a rig with hundreds of controllers, having those additional useless curve can be a pain. So here is the method I always use. Whenever I have finished to rig a character and I want to start its animation, I will create a new action that I will call keying set. I will key all the controllers and for each controller I will only use the desired or useful transform channels. For example, for the tail, I will use all the transform channels as I can move it, rotate it, or scale it. But for this elbow tweaker controller, I will only use location. Because rotation or scale wouldn't give any good result, I've locked those channels. Now, I will go in the drop down menu near my auto keying option, enable only active keying set, and instead of switching between different keying set, I will use available. With this keying set, Blender will only key the controller's transform channels that have already been keyed, the ones that have an available keyframe. If I move the elbow controller, only its location will be keyed because this is the only transform channel that was already keyed. If I move the foot that has a key on all its transform channel, all the transform channel will be keyed. And finally, if I move this eyelid controller that only has its Z location channel keyed, then there will only insert a keyframe on this Z location channel. While if I disable the only active keying set, it will create a keyframe on all the channels and it's going to be a mess. Now it can be a problem if you forget to double check the transform channels of the different controller of your character. If I remove all the keyframes from this bone and I press I to insert a keyframe, I will be prompt with an error message. Because I'm trying to key a controller using the only available keyframe, but this controller doesn't have any keyframe. The other issue you may have is you try to pose your character. You can see the auto keying is on, but in the end, Blender hasn't written any key because this controller wasn't keyed before you started animating. To fix the issue, you don't need to change the keying set. You can force the key insertion by simply pressing I while hovering over the transform value or any value. Or you can right click and choose insert keyframe. Now Blender has an available key and whenever you are posing your character in time, Blender will insert a keyframe. To make my life easier, I never use the keying set, so I will remove it. And instead, I will go to the preferences and under the animation tab, only insert available. 
And now, even if my king set is empty, Blender will only insert the available keyframe on the channels that were already keyed. So I always have this option enabled in my preferences. And this option can be combined with the king set. When I move the foot, all the available channel will be keyed. But now, if on top of that, I use the location keying set, when I move the foot controller, only its location will now be keyed. During the blocking stage, it could be handy to enable the whole character keying set so that whenever you will press I, all your controllers will be keyed, but only the available transform channels of value will be keyed, including the custom properties of your rig. And this is why I create this empty action called keying set, where I key only the useful transform channel of each controller. Here are a few additional options you will find in the preferences. In the animation panel under F curve, if you enable channel group colors, each controller will have the color it has in its bone group. Some people like it, others doesn't. It's up to you. By default, the XYZ to RGB option is enabled. If it's not, object curve can be of any color and it won't update if you re-enable it. You will first have to remove all the keys from your cube and re-key all the transform channels. Now all the X curve are in red, all the Y curve in green and all the Z curve in blue. I will disable only insert available and use only insert needed. If I rotate the cube, only its rotation channel will be keyed. If I move it, it will key the location, and if I scale it, only the scale will be keyed. If I re-enable only insert available, it will override the only insert needed and, and all the available channels will be keyed. I never used this option. The visual king works as the visual king we have seen in the beginning, and I don't use this one either. You can change the interpolation mode used by default for the new keys. But if you switch while you have already created keys with a different interpolation, it won't work. You will need to get rid of all the keys, switch and key again. So I don't really see the benefit here and I prefer to switch by selecting all my keys and press T and change the interpolation mode here. Finally, you can control the opacity of the unselected curves. You can choose the default smoothing mode, but I don't see that much of a change. So I'll always keep it to default and you can choose the handle type for the new keys that will be created. So I always keep them to auto clamped, but you can switch to vector or free. If you are working on a robot, for example, and you want something very linear. So in the end, there are tons of options to better fit your workflow, but generally, once you are set up, you won't be changing this option that much. If you want to further learn about animation in Blender, check out my courses. This is the end of this video, I hope it did help you. Have a nice one.